Oh, I do see cliff swallow nests yeah. under there. Oh, something's Ooh. happening. We might be figuring things out here, folks. Are you pumped? Are you yeah, excited? Let's go check it out. This is the first time I've been excited in years. Today, Ryan and I are headed down south on the nearly 12 and a half hour drive to Stillwater, Oklahoma. Along the way, we'll be stopping to look for a bird that isn't often seen in our state, the Eurasian tree sparrow. We looked online and found a couple of parks near St. Louis, Missouri where the birds had been recently seen. With a limited amount of time before we had to get back on the road, we pulled into the parking lot at our first location, Krev Kerr Park. This is interesting. Yeah, it's very, like, urban feeling. We ventured into the park, looking and listening for flocks of house sparrows that the Eurasian tree sparrows may have been associating with. Both species were introduced from Europe and are similar, but vary in color, range, and preferred habitat. While we walked, we also brushed up on our Eurasian tree sparrow call. Are you ready to be treated to sounds of the Eurasian tree sparrow? A little higher pitched. A little bit. Now knowing what to listen for, we embarked on our quest to pick out one of these birds. Did you hear that though? Like there's a bird flying there. There's a house sparrow again. See it? Yeah, well we should go where the house sparrows are. It sounds like house sparrows. We saw multiple flocks of sparrows, but none had our target bird in the mix. We crossed the street to another section of the park that had a lot of bird activity. We arrived near this lake over here, and we were looking up a bunch of places to find Eurasian tree sparrows, and it kind of looks like they're just kind of dotted throughout the region. So we picked a park that looked good. I think we're in the right spot now, so we're just scanning all the birds that are around and seeing if we can pick out a Eurasian tree sparrow from house sparrows that we've seen. Also had a blue gray gnat catcher. It's really hot and humid out though. It's only gonna get worse the farther know. south we go. Feeling like we were now in the right place, our excitement grew with every bird we saw hoping it was a Eurasian tree sparrow. Oh, there's a bird, sparrow-like. I think that might be a female house sparrow. It looked like a female house. Double check. Definitely a female house sparrow. What you got? Northern oh, Mockingbird, first one of the trip. Our continued searching yielded a chipping sparrow and a very loud southern bird species. You know, I think that is a Carolina run. After enjoying the sounds of the vocal Carolina wren, we also noted an eastern bluebird, brown-headed cowbirds, an eastern kingbird, and a white-tailed deer fawn. However, after searching around the park for about an hour without any sign of Eurasian tree sparrows, we started to feel like we were looking for a needle in a haystack at this expansive location. There's a ton of bird activity here, just not necessarily what we're looking for. We had no success finding your Asian tree sparrow here, but we did just hear purple martin. We found a Carolina and northern mockingbird, a lot of other kind of common species. We headed to our next location, Barrett Haven Park. We're trying this other park that's about 22 minutes away, and the photos on eBird showed that they're using a cliff swallow nest. As we pulled into the parking lot, we started to put the pieces together. I do not see a structure. The bridge. Oh, you think it's the bridge? <laughs> it might be. Also, there's purple mart houses. Yeah. Oh, I do see cliff swallow nests yeah. under there. Oh, something's Ooh. happening. We might be figuring things out here, folks. Are you pumped? Are you yeah, excited? Let's go check it out. This is the first time I've been excited in years. Oh, it's hot. Oh, it slaps you in the face. It slaps you right in the face. The short walk to the bridge gave us a look at a sparrow sitting on the concrete. It was indeed the Eurasian tree sparrow we were after. We got one, and it's gonna take me 20 minutes to set up my equipment, and hopefully it's still there. Nice. After finding our first Eurasian tree sparrow, we went to the other side of the bridge and discovered many more. 
We're looking at a bunch of Eurasian tree sparrows, and what they've done is they've occupied these old cliff swallow nests. So you'll see families of cliff swallows coming through, but also the Eurasian tree sparrows. We saw a house finch too, and a couple house sparrows mixed in. But all these birds originated from only 12 that were released in this region, and they've kind of populated this area. So this is a, a real hot spot for these. And they're, they're so cool to see, just because we don't have them where we are. <laughs> Eurasian tree sparrows can be identified by their brown cap, black throat and ear patch, cream-colored stomach, and patchy brown back. They are not sexually dimorphic, meaning males and females look the same. Nests are built in cavities, and the birds continue to build nests and raise young with the same mate once paired after their first breeding season. Eurasian tree sparrows often live in or near farmland or more open villages and parks, preferring to hide out in hedges or shrubbery rather than being in heavily wooded areas or cities. When foraging for food, they are normally seen on the ground, feeding on grains, seeds, plant material, or small invertebrates. The story of the Eurasian tree sparrow in America goes all the way back to April of 1870 when a shipment of birds from Europe was released in St. Louis, Missouri in order for European settlers to feel more at home. Twelve of those birds were Eurasian tree sparrows. The original twelve prospered and have since spread further into Missouri and also into sections of Iowa and Illinois and are occasionally found in other nearby states such as Wisconsin. These Eurasian tree sparrows are in the same old world sparrow family as the house sparrow, but for whatever reason the Eurasian tree sparrows didn't proliferate in America the same way that house sparrow did. So these are relegated to just small patches um, in the Midwest near Missouri and Illinois while the house sparrow is widespread to almost every single state. How do you feel? I feel good. It's so hard to leave them though. You know they're invasive, right? They're cool though. Like I appreciate them because we don't have them. Like if they're in Wisconsin, they're really rare. We passed a lady who was like, what are you looking at? We're like, Eurasian tree sparrows. She's like, oh, you see the purple martins up there? <laughs> we get pretty jacked still to find an invasive species as long as it's a lifer. Lifer. With nearly seven hours of driving left until we got to Stillwater, Oklahoma, Ryan and I parted ways with the birds of the bridge, feeling energized about our sightings. The release of Eurasian tree sparrows in 1870 was meant to make the European settlers feel more at home, and just as the settlers adapted to life in America, so has the Eurasian tree sparrow. If they will spread to the degree the European settlers did is yet to be seen, but as of right now, they remain a unique and interesting bird to see in and near St. Louis, Missouri, for locals or people just passing through. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Aren't they kind of in similar places house sparrows would be? Yeah, I suppose. Probably in the trash. <laughs> The trash is probably the best place to look. <laughs> but for real. This was a very unceremonious Missouri crossing. I didn't even see a welcome to Missouri sign yet. <laughs> they don't want to here. There it is. There's a welcome center and rest area. There it is. <laughs> Missouri. And then welcome to St. Louis where we immediately hit traffic.